Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today is June 18th, 2022. We are continuing to read Judah's Scepter and Joseph's Birthright by J.H. Allen. This book's about 100 years old. I mean, you know. And uh, apologies for not putting out much material. I uh, went back to work. Hey, $5 a gallon gasoline. So I, you know, retired, but uh, didn't, uh, didn't have a lot of money. So, uh, oh, and thank you for all those that have helped, helped me out there. Appreciate it. There's a few of you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I don't beg for donations. You know, it's just... I take care of pretty much everything myself. So, narrator, production manager, sound engineer. Yeah, yeah, I'm volunteer work here. So, what do they say? You get what you pay for. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, went back to work. I'm surprised they hired me at my age, but uh, yeah. Oh, well, chapter 11. Uh, which is page 137. This is a big book, by the way. This is uh, oh, it's around 300 pages. I don't know exactly. I'd have to look it up. But uh, yeah, it's it's a big book. So I'm not even halfway there yet. But it's... it's uh, books like this are getting to the point they're almost impossible to find. This... Uh, is a copy of the book from the University of Illinois Library on 1933 is when the book was in their library collection. So yeah, this book is, um, yeah, it's well over 300 pages. Matter of fact, it's over 350 pages. So I'm I'm not even halfway done with this book, so. All right, well, let's get reading here. Uh, page, yeah, 137, chapter 11. Joseph, Israel lost, continued. If it could be proved that Israel returned with Judah from the Babylonian-ish Babylonian captivity, it would only prove that her prophetic history was not fulfilled, and that those prophets, which both Jews and Christians have received as the true prophets of God, then they are but lying prophets. For Jeremiah also has given utterance to prophetic sayings, which are in full accord with those of the prophets already quoted, which cover the same ground, but give additional facts as in the following. Therefore, will I cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into the land that I gave unto, unto their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishers, you know, fishermen, fishers, saith the Lord. And they shall fish for them. And after, I will send many hunters. And they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and from every and from out of the holes of the rocks. For mine eyes are upon their ways. They are not hid from my faith. Face. They are not hid from my face. Neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land. 
They have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself? And they are no gods. Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know that the name, that thy name is the Lord. And that is in Jeremiah 16, 13 and 21. All right, this is going to be my note here. Now remember, um, we just read, let's see. Jeremiah said, Behold, I will send for many fishers, you know, fishers, fishermen, saith the Lord, and they shall fish for them. So God's going to fish for his people in the sea. And in Jeremiah 31, 31, Jesus, uh, uh, Jeremiah records the Lord saying that he will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, two different distinct peoples. Uh, but if you listen to the Hebrew roots heretics, they'll say it's a renewed covenant. Uh, you know, it didn't work the first time, but we're going to give it a second chance. You know, now my Bible says new, not renew. You know, just because you take an old car and give it a paint job, that uh, doesn't make it a new car. No, new covenant. You know, you got a 20 year old car and you put a paint job on it. Uh, you know, new tires, new brakes that don't make it a new car. Sorry, Hebrew roots heretics. So what is this about the fishers or the, you know? Well, I think the answer is in Luke chapter 5. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he, Jesus, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the nets, which was Simon's. Now remember, Simon Peter. And prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great, a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Wow, how's that for a, a, a harvest, you know? <laughs> you got so many fish in the thing and you're trying to pull it up and then the net's breaking. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. <laughs> now that's what you call a harvest, people. And Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And you wonder why Peter loved Jesus so much. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. Verse 10. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto them, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So Jesus is telling them, fear not. Jesus said unto Simon, fear not. From thenceforth, henceforth thou shalt catch men. 
He's going to catch men's souls instead of fish. Just like, um, yeah. Just like when uh, Jeremiah said, Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish for them. And after I will send many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and from the holes of the rocks. Yep, God's going to God's gonna fish for his people out of the sea of what they call humanity. So, and that was uh, Jeremiah 16, 13 through 21. We have given the above quotation in full and at length because as a prophecy it contains contains the facts of the casting out and return of Israel, together with a brief epitome of their history. While thus cast out, let us notice that, one, I will cast you out of this land. We know that they were taken into Assyria. Two, into a land that ye know not. They were not to remain in Assyria. And three, neither ye nor your fathers, a land unknown to the entire race, and as they were among the, the most, if not the most, civilized nations on the earth, we are safe in saying that it was to be a long way from their home, that they were to move on through the nations until they came into unknown regions, into the unin uninhabited, uninhabited, unexplored wilderness beyond the pales of civilization. Four, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, they can then and there get their fill of idolatry. Five, I will not show you favor, favor, i.e. not ease their punishment until, as he says, he has first recompensed their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land. They have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things i.e. Jeroboam's calves, Ahab's images of Baal, Moloch, etc., etc., etc. Verse 6, I mean, uh, point 6. When he says that he will not show them favor, the context proves that he means for a certain period or season. For he says, I will bring them again into their land, i.e. the Samaritan portion of Palestine. 7. I will send for many Hebrew Rab, abundant enough, plenteous, a multitude, fishers. Jesus said to his disciples, I will make you fishers of men. He came to his own tribal home, Judah, but his own received him not. And then he said unto them, Your house is left unto you desolate. But he said to his fishers, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 630 years prior to this, 120 years after Israel had been cast out and before the house of Judah was taken to Babylon, God had said through the mouth of Jeremiah, My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds, their priests, who were the lowest type of the people, have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from the mountain to hill, wandering. They have forgotten their resting place, i.e. their home. Point eight. And they shall fish them. These gospel fishermen of men are successful. Lost Israel takes the bait and is fished. Hallelujah! All of this is in harmony with the prophetic history of Israel, as read by the other prophets. For when Hosea is being used to prophesy concerning Israel, being hedged in with walls and thorns, and losing her paths, the Lord further adds, Behold, I will allure her, and bring her, Israel, and bring her into the wilderness, and speak comfortably, marginal reading, speak friendly to her heart, unto her. And it shall be in the day, in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt call me Ishai, my husband, and shalt no more call me Balai, my master. For I will make the names of Balaam, plural of Baal, out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their names. 
that is Hosea 2 and verse 14 through 17. Is it any wonder that the same prophet declares, Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? And that's in Hosea 14 and verse 8. Bob's note here. Right now, the white Western nations are generally not idol worshipers. Uh, unless, of course, you go to the Catholic Church. You know, they'll take a statue and call it Mary and bow down and pray to it. But, uh, I don't know. But, uh, do you know that idolatry is going to be coming again when the man of sin comes here? The, the beast, the Antichrist? Yeah, actually, it, it's coming. So, let's see you can read the whole chapter if you wish but let's take a look at revelation 13 13 real quick and he the false prophet and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and this is along the lines of what elijah did in the days of ahab and jezebel uh, Let's see, Elijah brought down fire from heaven once with the prophets of Baal, or Baal, um, and then twice with the uh, soldiers of uh, King Ahab. So, yeah, at least, at least three times that I'm aware of. And I... Personally, I believe the false prophet for the Antichrist is going to call himself Elijah because he's going to do some of the same miracles that Elijah did. And I think a lot of people are going to fall for this fakery. And you can read 2 Thessalonians where it gives you more information on, along those lines. So... And he, oh, and my uh, Elijah study on the community page, if you scroll down, one hour and 40 minutes, I contrast Elijah with what I believe is going to be the false prophet. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image, that they should make an image, or an idol, that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live, and did live, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as, as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So, he's going to give power to give life unto the image of the beast. So, the image of the beast is going to speak. And if you don't worship the image of the beast, you'll be killed. Remember when Nebuchadnezzar made the golden... Uh, image and the music came and then Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego wouldn't uh, worship the beast and Nebuchadnezzar had them thrown into a furnace of fire oh yeah you know the whole Bible belongs to the church I don't care what a preacher says um, you know it's given to us for an example I mean, you know, all you got to do is read it. I'll tell you what, uh, I bought the Bible on audio, the uh, King James Version narrated by Alexander Scorby. Wonderful. And you listen to that for hours every day, you're going to learn a lot. You know, James chapter... I think it's James chapter 1 
tells you if you lack understanding, ask the Lord for understanding. He'll give it to you, no problem. Now, uh, yeah, I think that study on uh, Elijah that I did is a real good indication of what we can expect. You, you got to realize something. There's probably, uh, my belief is, there's going to be a massive die-off of people. Who knows, you know, maybe the medical treatments they've been given people for the last, I don't know, two years, whatever, uh, year and a half or whatever it's been. Uh, massive die-offs, food shortages, a, and... Um, probably an economic collapse, which I believe they're going to use to usher in the cashless society and 666, you know, they're already, you know, the Federal Reserve Bank, which is a private bank, by the way, it's not part of the government. Take a look, open up your wallet, look at a $1 bill, Federal Reserve note. Yeah. Used to say treasury note, but um, no. And, um, but they're already looking for a digital currency. You know, all this stuff about Bitcoin and all this stuff. Uh, that's just to get people prepared for, you know, <laughs> uh, cashless society. 666. People think it's a joke, but more I look at the Bible, the more it's being fulfilled. I, you know, I was a heathen in high school. All right, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll take a look at this real quick and I'll get back to reading this book. Um, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, and oh, by the way, um, my point was uh, massive die-offs, famine, disease, uh, cashless society, ec economic collapse. You know, the man of sin... The Antichrist, he's going to be seen as a savior by the world. He, you know, it's like people are going to be looking to him. And when the false prophet is able to do miracles, I mean, who knows? He might even be healing people like Jesus did for whatever. I don't know. I don't know what miracles he's going to perform. The Bible says he'll be able to perform miracles and lying wonders. But um, there, he's going to be seen as the savior of the world. And these stupid churchgoers that never bothered to read their Bibles, they're going to be in trouble because they're going to probably end up following the beast. And then they're going to be just like Jesus said, you know, why calleth me Ye, why calleth ye me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things that I say? And, you know, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Probably the scariest words you could ever hear in your whole life. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And the deceived church world will tell you that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is two different things. Well, the day of Christ is, uh, you know, one's the pre-trib rapture and the other is the... Uh, when he comes back at the end of the uh, tribulation, thus they end up denying that Jesus Christ is Lord. <laughs> you know, no, it, it's one event. The day of Christ and the day of the Lord is one event, and it's at the end of the tribulation. And this is talking about when Christ returns in glory. He only returns once. He doesn't return one and a half times for the pre-trib rapture and then a second time or is it the second coming and the third coming no no verse 3 jesus warned you about church pastors let no man deceive you by any means for that day what day the second coming 
For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And here we are, people. You know, when Harry Potter outsells the Bible, you got a problem. Spiritual problem. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Well, we're talking about the Antichrist. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God and I believe they're going to rebuild the temple and start doing animal sacrifices that's my opinion there's two groups called the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute and they are committed to rebuilding the temple and redoing animal sacrifices as a denial of what Jesus did on the cross. So that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Miracles, people. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall give them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, God hath from the beginning chosen you. Boy, do the uh, people that rail on Calvinism hate that. See, Calvin, John Calvin, believed in election. I don't follow John Calvin. I'm not a Calvinist. Calvin didn't die for me. There's some things I agree with Calvin, and there's probably some things that I disagree with Calvin, but I never studied, I never really studied Calvin. I studied the Word of God. And if, and if Calvin believes in election, God bless him, because I do too, because God teaches that. But the, um, the whosoever will people and they'll call you, oh, you're a Calvinist. No, I believe in election. I believe God has a chosen people. Yes, absolutely. I don't believe in the whole wide world like they want to. You know, if that's true, then open up the borders and let everybody come to Europe and America because let's preach the gospel to everything and everyone. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So, verse 13, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, beloved brethren of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. All right, so let's get reading this book again. Um, all right, point... Uh, let's see. Okay. Is it any wonder that we're reading the book again? Is it any page 140? 
Is it any wonder that the same prophet declares, Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? Hosea 14.8 Concerning this fact of Israel's receiving the gospel while cast out, Thus saith the Lord, The people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel. Jeremiah 31 and verse 2 The law came by Moses. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And I say amen to that. Hence, the lost sheep of the house of Israel receive the gospel blessings because of the fishers which are sent to them. 9. And after that, I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them. The violent protest of our brother, from whose contemporary was quoted on a former occasion, is prima facie evidence that this prophecy concerning the hunting of them has been and is being fulfilled. It is as follows. Hence, all of this hue and cry about the lost tribes, ransacking all the world to find them, and writing vast volumes, is a piece of twaddle and nonsense. Twaddle, I guess that's, yeah, stupidity, right? Thousands of people are now studying, glory to God, great books, thank God for them, which claim to identify the lost tribes. Amen and, amen and amen, for God says they shall hunt for them. Another of those who object to so much hunting, Rawlison, R-A-W-L-I-N-S-O-N, has unwittingly, unwittingly proved this prophecy to have been fulfilled, for he says they, the ten tribes, have been found a hundred times in a hundred different localities. This proves that the Lord in order that his word of truth might be fulfilled, has to say that the least raised up 100 hunters had Professor Rawlinson said they were supposed to have been found 100 times in 100 different localities. We could no doubt, we could not, uh, we could no doubt, not doubt that his statement was true. For it is true that thousands are studying and writing and ransacking the world to find the lost tribes of Israel and the prophecy concerning the hunters and the hunted stands vindicated, albeit many have hunted in vain. You know, their, their search was useless. Otherwise, we are forced to the conclusion that one of the holy men who was moved by the Holy Ghost to write the Bible were jesting, because hunters of that which was not lost... Because he wrote concerning a core of men who should uh, who should become hunters of that which was not lost. In other words, Bob's note here. Bob, in other words, if Israel was not lost, then people are searching for nothing. And God said that people would be searching for Israel. And they would lose their identity. Which happens when you're taken into a foreign land in slavery and... You lose the ability to speak Hebrew and read Hebrew, and and then you move somewhere else, you know, your history's gone. All right, so, and since, uh, let's read the book. And since God has furnished the hunters, for it is by reading this, his word, that they become inspired to hunt, we would be forced to conclude that he would play or juggle with the credibility of the human race. Point 10. It is evident from the declaration, they are not hid from my face, that the people in question were hid from others. Else why would the Lord say that they were not hid from him? If they were not hid from the Lord, who were they hid from? The answer, the hunters. Point 11. The 19th verse relate to the Gentiles who shall come unto the Lord from the ends of the earth. The Hebrew word goy, which is here translated Gentiles, is often translated nations, people, tribes, and faraway people. God had told Israel that he would cast them afar off, and in Jeremiah 1 and verse 10, this same Hebrew word is translated nations. 
In Jeremiah 31, 9, while speaking to Joseph, Ephraim, Samaria, Israel, the Lord says, I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations. Boy, you know, sometimes that word's translated as Gentiles. That's Bob's note. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, Goy, and declare it to the isles afar off, and he that scattereth, scattered Israel will gather him. Bob's note here. And declare it to the isles afar off. Hmm. Israel was scattered to the isles. Do you know that Greece is a nation of islands? The New Testament was written in Greek. Oh, yeah. What is Britain? It's an island, right? Yeah. What nation gave us the King James Bible? Uh, the Congo, China, Korea, Japan? No. Ethiopia? Uh, no. Oh, 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 I got it. Britain, England, the United Kingdom. Yeah. The Isles. The Isles are far off. Oh, do you know that the word Brit means covenant? And ish means man. So British, British means covenant man. Yeah, a Hebrew word for the British. Yeah, but that's just a coincidence, right? Yeah, because we know that you know who's are really all of Israel. At least that's what the satanic church world will lie to us about. All right, part point 12. And in this prophecy, which we are considering, we are told that these nations shall yet come from the ends of the earth and say, surely our fathers have inherited lies. How so? Do not forget, Hosea has prophesied concerning the same people, saying that in the place where it shall be said unto them, ye are lo am I, or not the people of God, there it shall be said unto them, Am I, or ye are, the sons of the living God? These people shall return to their home and to their Lord, who will be there about the time they get there. And they shall say, We have inherited lies. Yeah, that's what you get. Bob's note here. That's what you get for going to churches with unsaved or unscholarly pastors or whatever so wolves among the sheep all right let's keep reading we have inherited lies we for we have been told that we are not the seed of abraham but now we know that we too have abraham as our father point 13 uh bob's note here before i read any further um uh, there are certain church groups, I think they're called uh, the Christ Adelphians, and I think the Jehovah's Witnesses too, teach that Germany are descended from the Assyrians because they trace the migrations of Germany from Assyria. Well, guess what? Israel was in the Assyrian captivity before Judah was taken into the Babylonian captivity. And the Assyrians took a large portion of Judah uh, also. So they took par portions of all 12 tribes into Assyria. And that's why I think Germany is Judah, because they fulfill the prophecies of Judah. Judah was supposed to be the tribe of the kings. Well, guess what? Almost all the kings of Europe were of Germanic extraction. In World War I, the king of England, the king of Germany, and the king of Russia were cousins. Yeah, the Tsar of Russia, they were cousins. And, and the you-know-whos tricked us into all fighting each other and killing each other. And we're brethren. Brethren! We're brothers! And we're killing each other for the you-know-whos. People are stupid. If they knew this information, they wouldn't have been fighting 
each other, they would have been killing the you-know-whos, which I don't believe happened in World War II, but, uh, well, the Brethren killed each other in World War II, but did they kill the you-know-whos in the World War II? The, you know, the, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I don't believe it happened, but what do I know? All right, um, but yeah, Germany, they, they trace the migrations of the Germanic people from Assyria. Well, Israel was in Assyria, along with portions of Judah. Oh, the Assyrian Empire surrounded Jerusalem. 185,000 soldiers. Yeah, surrounded Jerusalem. Jerusalem was in danger of being taken. And the Lord sent an angel, and he and the one angel killed the Assyrian army. 185,000 dead. Gone. That was the end of the siege of Jerusalem. But the surrounding areas of Judah around Jerusalem, a lot of those were taken. So a, a, a good portion of Judah was taken into the Assyrian captivity to also, along with Israel. So... When the JWs or the Christadelphians say, oh, the Germans are as the Assyrians, they're actually proving that Germany is Israel. And what did Germany give us? The printing press. What was the first book the printing press, the Gutenberg printed? Uh, the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, verse 13, page 143. Then saith the Lord, I will cause them to know mine hand, and they might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord, i.e. Jehovah. Well, that's, some people say Jehovah, some people say Yahweh, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows how to pronounce the name of the Lord uh, with 100% certainty, but that's just, that's just one guy's opinion. Uh, so we find that while Israel was taken into Assyria, they were not to stay there, but were to wander into an unknown country called the wilderness. And that eventually, when they have fulfilled their destiny by becoming many nations, the head of the nations is in the isles of the sea, and that the Lord is to gather them from there. So it is evident that the school of teachers who say that Israel returned from Judah from Babylon um, do not know where the birthright kingdom is, thus making it quite clear that they are lost even to those who say that there is no lost Israel. The above facts are in harmony with still other authentic history as contained in the apocryphal, apocryphal books of Ezra, i.e. E-S-D-R-A-S, uh, e um, Bob's note here, the um, Catholic Bibles have the Apocrypha, and the original King James had it in between the New and the Old Testaments. Uh, they don't really consider it scripture, but some consider it like history or whatever. Um, like Bell and the Dragon, I, I don't, yeah, that's garbage. But uh, uh, like Maccabees and ESDRAS seem to have some historical value you know i read them once and that's it so i don't know um the above facts are in harmony with still other authentic history as contained in the apocryphal books of esdras mind you we do not assert that this book is inspired oh okay he says that mind you we do not assert that this book is inspired although there are thousands who with ourselves believe it is but we will give it simply as corroborative, corroborative history. Esdras had seen a vision in which there were two companies, one a warlike and the other a peaceful company. The declared explanation of the peaceful company is as follows. Whereas thou sawest that he gathereth, that he gathered another peaceful company, those are the ten tribes which are carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king whom 
Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them away so that they came into another land. But they took counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into Europe, uh, into Euphrates, by the narrow passage, the gate of the river, for the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over, for through the country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, and the same region is called Asareth, margin, Ararath, hence as Ararat, or Armenia. You ever heard of uh, Bob's note here? You ever heard of Ararat, the mountain? Some people think that that's where Noah's Ark is resting. I don't know. Uh, I'm just, you know, pointing that out. Uh, same, uh, same as Ararat or Armenia, which are only different forms of the same word. Uh, then they dwelt there until the latter time. And now when they shall begin to come, the highest shall say, shall stay the springs of the streams again that they shall go through. Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace. And that is quoted in 2nd ESD RAS uh, chapter 13 verses 30, 39 through 47. And that's in the Apocrypha. Every statement made in this extract is corroborated by unquestioned canonical writings as we have shown except one. And Isaiah shuttle, uh, settles that one as follows. The Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shod. Dry land, right? Uh, and there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Mind you, he does not say that they shall come from Assyria. He is speaking of the remnant of his people which are left from Assyria, i.e. the Assyrian captivity. The tongue of the Egyptian sea is not in root from either Babylonia, Babylon or Assyria. The tongue of the Egyptian sea is a tongue of the Red Sea and the river with seven streams mouths or Delta is the river Nile which waters Egypt and these are in a direction from Palestine which is diametrically opposite to that of Assyria and Babylon Bob's note I guess it's yeah a different area so no I'm not looking at a map so all right let's keep reading after all, it is not so much a question of the lost ten tribes, for some out of all the tribes returned to the kingdom of Judah in the days of Rehoboam, the first king of Judah. Bob's note here. I'm sure that there was a portion of faithful people that didn't like all the idolatry in Israel, and they went to Judah to try to properly worship the Lord. Let's keep reading. This is no doubt the reason that the Jews, upon their return from Babylon, offered the twelve bullocks for all Israel as a burnt offering unto the Lord. But it is a question of the lost house of Joseph, that is, the lost birthright. The Jews, however, denationalized and scattered everywhere, have never been lost. But as foretold, they have always been so well known that they have become a byword. Consequently, they have never been hunted for, but there is a prophecy in the Psalms concerning a people by the name of Israel who are spoken of as the hidden people of the Lord, and when he is called upon to defend from their enemies, of this it is declared, they, the enemy, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones by hidden ones they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name israel 
may be no more in remembrance. And that is in Psalms 83, verses 3 and 4. Hence, there is a people who bear the name of Israel, which, as we have learned, is the name of the birthright nation, which, if it is not now hid, has in the past been hid from all except the omnipotent one. And that is the first part of the book and the end of chapter um uh, what was that chapter 11 yeah something like that so yeah chapter 11 so uh in the next in starting in page 149 uh he has a uh, he has the second part of the book and he's going to start over with chapter one. And the name of that chapter is The Scepter and the Davidic Covenant. Um, so Bob's, uh, Bob did a, uh, 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 a playlist. If you look at my playlist on covenants of the Bible, I mean, you could write an entire book on just covenants of the Bible. God made a covenant with Noah, not to flood the earth anymore with water. God made a covenant with Abraham, reconfirmed the covenant with Isaac, reconfirmed a covenant with Jacob Israel, made a covenant with uh, basically all the 12 tribes. And, um, and then he made a covenant with King David. And um, I mean, <laughs> yeah. And if you look at the covenants, it uh, makes a lot of sense. And that's how you can identify, uh, to an extent, what tribe is what nation among the peoples. That's how you can tell. You know, Germany was to be first in war and the tribe of the kings. You know, it took... The whole world almost the whole world to defeat the german people in world war one and world war two seriously germany was fighting france england america and russia in world war one and world war two huh. you know <laughs> seriously um you know but um uh, yeah it took the Germans in America to defeat the Germans in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Germany, I had an old history book um, that was stolen from me by a you-know-who. It was in my storage unit when I had just bought my house. And I wish I'd have got it. Um, I got it from the college library, the college I was going to. The book was like from the 19-teens. I don't remember the exact year one of the books the other book was from the 1920s it was a history book wish i still had it i don't even remember the name of it but uh it stated that um the majority of americans in world war one wanted to fight against england not germany and the books the history book stated that 25 percent of the uh, america was of germanic extraction yeah. Do you know that in um, uh, when they decided in 1776, when they decided to uh, make America a nation instead of a colony, that English was um, voted on number one as the you know language of the nation? Of course, that doesn't apply anymore, especially if you go to L.A. and Miami. But um, there was a, another language in the running that was the number two most popular language in the nation. That was German. Didn't you know that King George I spoke England, uh, German? He was king of England, but he spoke German. Yeah. I think, if memory serves me correctly, he didn't even speak English. 
The King of England didn't even speak English. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.